everyone. My name is Asta. I welcome you all to our classes for International English Olympiad for class 8th. Today is our 6th class in the series and the title today is and the topic that we are going to do today is one word substitution. It is going to be a very interesting one where we substitute a group of words for another. Uh, it sort of works as a you know word meaning sort of thing. So it is going to add on to your vocabulary a lot. So make sure you write down any new words that you any new word meanings that you find. All right. So let's just get started. All right. So what one word substitution signifies is what do we mean by it? We are going to have words that replace a group of words or a full sentence effectively without creating any kind of ambiguity in the meaning of sentences. Which means one word substitution is what? We will either have a, a group of words or a sentence which will be replaced by another word in such a way that there will not be any kind of ambiguity in the meaning of sentences. Ambiguity means will, it means there will not be any kind of uh, any kind of confusion in the meaning of sentences. That means both of these, with whether it is the group of words, the full sentence, or this word, they will have both of them will have the same meaning. This will be some sort of a substitution. Okay, substitution is what? Where you replace one thing with another and there is uh, no confusion created, no ambiguity created and both of them, they mean the same thing. So that is what is going to happen in one word substitution. All right, so that's what one word substitution is. Now let's move on. So here we have a few examples for one word substitution. Like, um, what did we read about them? Uh, we know that there are a group of words or a sentence which is then replaced by one word and there is no kind of ambiguity created, which means the meaning is the same. Like here, we, when we say one who does not express himself freely, that person can be called an introvert. Okay. So here, a group of words or sentence is being replaced by the word introvert. Like here, someone who behaves without moral principles, that person could be called immoral. Then a person who is incapable of being tampered with, and person, you know, we shouldn't be tampering with, that's in, impregnable. Then one who is unable to pay his debts, a person, you know, um, who has lost all his money and he's taken so much debt, that person and now is unable to pay it. That person could be called an insolvent. A person who is mentally ill could be called a lunatic. And a person who dislikes humankind and avoids human society. A person who in general who just dislikes humankind. That's, that person could be called a misanthrope. Alright, so that's uh, how we're going to do one word substitution. You have, a, you have a sentence or a group of words which can be replaced by another word, which can be rather substituted by another word, which means it does not create any ambiguity or confusion in its meaning. All right, this is one set of examples. Let's move on. All right, here we have a large group of people. Now, a large group of people could be called a horde. Then we have a study. The scientific study of physiology, structure, genetics, ecology, distribution, classification, economic importance of plants. That study could be called botany. Then we have a person who draws or produces maps. That person could be called a cartographer. Then a person who writes beautiful writing, that's calligrapher. And uh, a, the, actually the art of writing, uh, the art of writing beautifully could be called calligraphy. Similarly, the study of maps could be called cartography. Then we have a person who composes the sequence of steps and moves for the performance of a dance. That is a choreographer. 
and similarly um, this art of composing the sequence of steps moves for dance performances could be called choreography see now choreography is choreographer is a noun which is referring to a person choreography could be you know an art form or which could be called uh, basically a study of dance moves that way okay so these are again a few examples of one word substitution Okay, here we have like a place where bees are kept. The collection of beehives, apiary, then a building containing tanks of live fish of different species, aquarium. A place, a scene of activity, debate, or conflict could be called an arena. All right. This is again, you know, see apiary, aquarium. These are these all are nouns that we are substituting these group of words or sentences with. All right. so that's the job of one word substitution we replace a group of words a sentence with another word and there is no ambiguity or confusion created which means this group of words and this word all of them both of them have the same meaning all right we have taken conjunctions pad liye now is time to take our quiz Conjunctions are not so difficult. इसमें बस आपको क्या करना है इसमें बस जो हमने कंजंक्शन करे हैं इनके मीनिंग के हिसाब से हमें इनको सेंटेंसेस में फॉर्मेशन में डालना है ऑल राइट द वेरी इजी लेट्स स्टार्ट all right so for the quiz what we will be doing is now every question you will be given 1 minute 1 minute means 60 seconds why am i giving you 1 minute because you see your question paper of ieo it has about uh, 50 questions and so you can uh, imagine that you know you get more or less a minute to answer the questions now this 1 minute is the maximum that you should be taking for answering the question now suppose there could be two three two three categories of students first category is suppose you answer the question within that 1 minute so i would request you to fast forward the video and uh skip right to the answer you should not be wasting your time all right now the other students who are not able to answer the question in 1 minute what you do you don't skip to the answer you pause the video and you write down your answer all right it is very important to answer each and every question because there is no negative marking here you see for every incorrect answer no points because there is no negative marking in ieo so it is important that you attempt all the questions now for a question of which you are not sure about the answer now even here and even in the exam if you are not sure about the answer and you may be think that b option is might be correct or c option might be correct so you should uh, in that case play your luck and play your mind and make a guess and still give an answer because it is a win win situation either you will get the marks for that question or you will get a zero right but if you don't attempt that question at all then you are anyway getting a zero in that right so it is good to attempt those questions and uh, even if you don't know all the answers try to understand and take a guess okay so this is for every correct answer 10 points this is just for your uh, for your own little game where you can try uh, to maintain a notepad so here you write the name of the chapter and then the question and then if it is correct you can give yourself 10 points if it is not correct you mark it here so it is important to mark to see these questions the ones which you mark incorrect it is important to go back to them later and then 
see where you did the mistake. All right, this is just for your reference. For every correct answer, you can give yourself ten points. All right. Now let's uh, start. All right. So now we start off with the questions. Here you see, choose the most appropriate one-word substitution for the given description. We given a description, and we just have to choose its substitution one word. Persons living at the same times, colleagues, contemporaries, ancestors, forefathers. Pretty easy. The correct answer is contemporaries. People who live at the same time. That's contemporary. For example, you and me, both of us are contemporaries. And colleagues, the people you work with, ancestors and forefathers, um, the generation which came, your family's generation which came before you. Okay. Okay, here one who loves one, uh, one who loves one, one's country, revolutionary, traitor, patriot, or ambassador. So here the correct answer is C, patriot. One who loves one own country is patriot. Then here we have ambassador. Ambassador is sort of a representative who is uh, sent to from one country to another to represent their country. Like if uh, an Indian ambassador goes to USA, so he is like a representative of India. That's ambassador. Traitor, someone who's disloyal and betrays. Okay. Then we have revolutioner, someone who is engaged in a revolution, bringing about a certain fundamental change. Okay, structural change.
All right, here study of the influence of stars on human affairs, astronomy, zoology, astrology, or biology. Here the answer is C, astrology. Astrology is the study of influence of stars on human body. Whereas others like astronomy, astronomy is the study of the astro astronomical objects, heavenly bodies like suns, stars, uh, moons, galaxy, etc. Okay, then we have. Uh, Sorry, then we have zoology. Zoology involves the study uh, of the animal kingdom. Okay, it is a certain, it is a branch of biology. And here, biology is actually the study of the biological elements and processes in the human body, in the animal body. All right. Okay, now here we have speaking aloud while alone. Prologue. B. Soliloquy. C. Dialogue or D. Epilogue. Here the correct answer is B. Soliloquy. Now this is usually done by, uh, we can say dramatic characters, the ones who practice, right, who practice without an audience to improve their art. That can be called a soliloquy. Here we have prologue. Prologue is an introductory section of a certain dramatic literary work. Epilogue is the end section. Dialogue is the conversation between two people or more than two people. Okay. Now we have a government by officials. A government by officials it is known as bureaucracy. Then we have democracy. Democracy is a government of the people, for the people and by the people. Then we have autocracy. Autocracy means a government of one person, one person who has absolute power. Okay. And then we have aristocracy. Aristocracy is in certain societies is a certain rule where uh, the ruling family uh, involves people of uh, birth, which will involves having hereditary title. Okay, like the titles they go from father to son, then to the grandson, like that. Okay.
ओके हियर वन हु नोज मेनी लैंग्वेजेस बायलिंगुअल पॉलीग्लॉट फिलोसोफर और नरेटर सो हियर अ पर्सन हु नोज मेनी लैंग्वेजेस इज यूजुअली रेफर टू एज पॉलीग्लॉट ओके वेयर इज बायलिंगुअल इज अ पर्सन और यू नो समवन हु इज एबल टू यू एबल टू यूज टू लैंग्वेजेस इक्वली वेल फिलोसोफर वन हु expresses his philosophy narrator someone who's narrating narrates certain character or anything okay narrator certain script Okay, here we have life history of a man written by someone else. Autobiography, biography, calligraphy, or autography. Pretty easy. The correct answer is biography. Life history of a man written by someone else. For example, if I write my own history, my life story, and it is but it is written by someone else, then it's a biography. But if I write it on my own, then that is an autobiography. Calligraphy is basically the art of um, beautiful handwriting. you know those different uh, fonts and uh, different uh, access basically accessorizing those fonts okay then we have orthography is like the writing done with own hand orthograph de do matlab apna you know you write with your own hand give me a message like that All right now next this one says a speech delivered without any preparation now speech delivered without any preparation debate declamation extemporaneous symposium some speech delivered without any preparation is called an extempore now the other words you see debate debate is a sort of uh, that speech that uh, uh, speech where you choose sides either you speak for or you speak against all right then we have declamation Do declamation is basically against speech um speech to an audience uh, in a formal way and then we have symposium symposium is also a sort of a speech we can say but to where it is uh, there are more people involved okay it's sort of a discussion where everybody gets a chance to speak their part
I'll write now next. This one says matter written by hand. Manuscript, sculpture, scription or monument. Here the matter written by hand is called manuscript. Sculpture actually refers to the statue kind of things. Okay, scription refers to basically um, sort of inscriptions and then monument. Uh, we know what monuments are. Like we have India Gate, like we have Red Four. These are historical monuments, buildings and uh, pieces of architecture basically. Okay, here, a government by one person, democracy or dictatorship or bureaucracy or aristocracy. A government by only one person is referred to as dictatorship. All right, all the others we have discussed, democracy for the people, by the people, of the people, bureaucracy, government of officials and aristocracy, where you have hereditary titles. Okay, here. An athletic event in which each competitor takes part in 10 events. Decahedron, decathlon, pentathlon or hexathlon. Now, for those who know maths, this will be pretty easy to answer. Like you have those, uh, those polygons, right? A polygon with four sides is called quadrilateral, with five sides is called a pentagon, with six sides is called a hexagon, seven sides septagon most probably, so like that. An athletic event in which each competitor takes part in ten events is called decathlon. Alright, dec is used for ten.
Okay, so now we have a large number of shots or bullets. Valley, cluster, volley or mob. So, okay, a large number of shots or bullets is called volley. Okay, which can actually be referred to some sort of a collective noun also. So with this, we finish off with our questions on one word substitution. That's all for a class on one word substitution. I hope you have understood the basic premise. If you found any new words, I'm pretty sure you've written them down. Make sure you revise them. You revise them so that, you know, it gets, uh, gets sort of embedded in your, in your vocabulary memory so that you can use them. Uh, at the right time in your conversations and your writing skills or speaking skills. Alright, so I will see you the next time. Thank you for watching.